What's up, fellow age groupies? Welcome to another episode of the Age Groupies Podcast, part of the United WeCast Network. I'm Mike Ergo, and along with my co-host, Lindsay Hyken, we're here to talk to you about all things related to endurance sports from an amateur athlete perspective. We talk about how to have fun along the way and make the sport a little less intimidating. You all can follow the show on Instagram, at Age Groupies. Join Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have any questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us agegroupies at gmail.com if you guys like the show please leave us a rating and review on itunes or those other places people get podcasts all right guys enjoy the episode let's get to it Welcome to the Age Groupies podcast. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey. So today, Mike and I are actually doing a joint interview, which it's been a while (laughs) since we've done one. I think it was Fireman Rob last time. Fireman Rob, yeah. That was a couple couple months months ago. ago. Yeah, something like that. Um, And today we are interviewing Wes Forns, who is... Um, a really good coach. I think I may have mentioned him before uh, when I was training for Trans Rockies. Um, Wes was coaching me on my run and I actually got running again without knee pain and um, was starting to pick up the pace. That's all gone to hell. So hopefully Trans Rockies will be happening in 2021, Wes, and you can get me back into shape. Um, We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the reason we wanted to talk to Wes today is that he has done something amazing uh recently so tell us a little bit about the event that you just just completed Wes yeah yeah sure first of all it's thank you for having me on um so the event was called uh it's called the hoodoo 300 and it takes place in St. George Utah it's 300 miles long to be exact it's 294 uh miles long but uh it's it's uh it takes you pretty much around Zion uh, National Park, uh, and it climbs about uh, 19,000 feet is what I had on my Garmin by the time I, I had finished. So it's, yeah, roughly 300 miles, uh, 19,000 feet of climbing, and oh, it's on a bike, by the way. On a know. bike, on a bike, um, I, yes. Uh, and yeah, we need to make that distinction. Clear. Not in a car. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and it's a race. And, uh, and so it's, 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 you can stop, but you, you have, you know, for my division, I had a crew of a couple of people helping me out. Um, uh, these are athletes that I coach, uh, who were nice enough to come out and help me. And, uh, so they're handing me food along the way. And, uh, I only stopped once to, to change out my bike from my road bike to my time trial bike. But other than that, I am just going, uh, and it took me, 17 hours. So it's pretty much 17 hours of just riding. Wow. Holy, yeah. holy moly. Um, <laughs> okay. I have so many questions, but um, let's, so this is why we wanted to talk to him because I feel like this is an amazing thing to have done. Um, and I recently did a 100 mile ride with just under 10,000 feet of climbing was like, yes. <laughs> so, you know, thinking about double that is just, uh. um, but let's back up a little bit and, and talk to you about how um, you got into endurance sports and how you got into coaching and kind of let's back it up a little bit and then we'll lead back up to the Hoodoo 300. Absolutely. So I had always been in athletics growing up, um, played soccer um, in, in high school. I lettered in four sports. Um, I was just really hyperactive. Um, I played football in high school, track, cross country, and soccer. And then uh, when I was a junior in high school, I was like, oh, how am I going to, what am I going to do in college? And so I really set out, uh, kind of ta- targeted soccer and, uh, and just was practicing all the time and was dead set on trying to get a scholarship to play soccer. And turns out I, I didn't get a scholarship to play soccer, but I did get a scholarship to run track and field at Dallas Baptist University. So I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and the cross country coach came out to my regional meet. Uh, I ended up winning the meet. He pulled me aside after the meet and he was like, listen, I got one spot 
it's a full ride. It's yours if you want it. And I was like, wow, okay. Uh, so I went out and checked out the campus. I was like, I'm in. And so I ran track and cross country my freshman year at Dallas Baptist University. But the training required waking up at 4.30 in the morning and running and running and running. And I was a freshman in college and I was like, I can't do this. I was going to bed at three o'clock in the morning, uh, living on campus. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this. So I ran a season uh, and did okay. Uh, but uh, I ended up talking to the, the soccer coach and he was like, you know, our goalkeeper is graduating next year and there would be a spot. So I ended up switching from cross country and track and, and playing soccer and not having to wake up at, at 4 30 in the morning, which was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, uh, when I finished college, I, I still had the running bug. Um, so I was doing just primarily running, uh, triathlons and duathlons in Texas were taking off, especially duathlons. So I bought a bike and I started competing in sprint duathlons. So this is like in my early twenties and had some success and was winning some races as a 25 year old. I had my running pedigree behind me. So I was, I was able to, uh, I was running about, you know, my 5k time was around 1630, which is not that impressive. Um, or that competitive when you're trying to win races, but I was really struggling with the bike. Um, and th so then from there, I was doing duathlons and met some triathletes and I was like, wow, they're doing three sports. And so I was like, wow, that's impressive. So I was like, I want to do that. So I started swimming, had a swim coach in Dallas and he really helped me out. He was like, listen, if you want to become a better swimmer, I need you swimming six days a week. So I was Holy just, cow. I started swimming six days a week and I was just all in. And then I started doing triathlons. So I've been, I dabbled in triathlons and was competing for another decade in that. Um, and, and really that's what I've been doing. Um, and then I married, had a kid and I was like, wow, if I want to, if I don't want my wife to divorce me, I, I don't know if I can do three sports. Uh, and so, uh, we have a little three-year-old. And so since we had Jackson, and I've been doing primarily just cycling. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little rundown. Awesome. You know, it's interesting about the switching from the, the multi-sport to the one sport. I think that's kind of the advantage of being a triathlete is that when things come up in life, like a three-year-old, like a baby, or for mm -hmm. me, it was like going to grad school or whatever, you can just drop down to one for a little while and focus on improving that one. Um, yeah. and competing. And then when it's the time's right, you can, you know, add back in the swimming and the running or the cycling or whatever you, you would drop. So, so that's awesome. But I will say that it sounds like to me, and I don't know, we're going to talk to you about it, but training for a 300 mile ride, seems like it would be a lot of yeah. time <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not so much time for, you know, six days a week in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true. So, true. Mike here. I want to talk to you about UCAN Superstarch. UCAN is what I consume on the race course and for long or intense training sessions. Now, it's different than any sports nutrition out there because they use Superstarch. Superstarch is a complex carbohydrate that doesn't spike blood sugar, delivering a slow and steady release of glucose into the bloodstream. Stable blood sugar provides steady energy to both the muscles and the brain and controls cravings caused by blood sugar lows. I recently used this to complete the Pandemic Man 70.3 using only you can and let me tell you guys i was surprised by how well it worked pleasantly surprised i didn't need to use any gels anything just you can and i felt great i didn't feel bloated didn't feel hungry didn't have any of those intense cravings i get on the race course a lot so i want you to try it out too. learn about why you should feel the pursuit with you can and save 10 percent on all your orders by using the link in the show notes or entering the promo code you can inspire me at checkout. That's U C A N I N S P I R E M E at checkout. Thanks. Was this your first ultra distance or how did you kind of, did you ramp up to the 300 or how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what's interesting is that I actually became interested in ultra uh, riding or racing um, a couple of years ago. And uh, the, the reason is, is because I've always been a short distance athlete. So it, when I ran in college, I ran the mile um, and I ran the 5k as well. 
but uh, the 5K, all the training is just intense, intense, intense. Um, and there's not a whole lot of 13 mile runs or 15 mile runs. It's just intensity. And so I had always dubbed myself as a short distance athlete. Even in triathlons, I excel at the sprint distance. Uh, I've never done an Ironman, like ever. Um, so Olympic distance, uh, 70.3s were even a little bit too long for me. So I saw a couple of documentaries on Race Across America. And I was just really intrigued. I think what really intrigued me about it is that, A, uh, you know, can I even do something like that? Because I've always kind of compartmentalized myself as a sprint athlete. Um, and B, it was just the personal challenge. Uh, because when you, as a coach in coaching Ironman athletes and ultra distance runners and athletes, is that there's always a dark place that you hit when you're doing ultras or anything like over 10 hours. You're going to hit a dark place mentally. Um, and how do you overcome that and become resilient? When you do sprint triathlons, you don't really hit a lot of dark places. It's over, you know, in an hour. Um, but when you're doing these ultras, it's, it's the mental resiliency and toughness that really intrigued me that you really have to dig deep and find that inner resolve and push through and get through it. And so I saw a couple of documentaries, was inspired and uh, uh, found a partner to do a race across America. And, uh, and so it was, we were going to do it as a team. And so I trained, and this was like in 2018, uh, where I was, we were going to train to race across America in a relay division, which is 3000 miles. I would do roughly half of that. So that's 1500 miles. And so for nine months, I was just doing, you know, distance, 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 you know, training about, I would say about riding 15 hours a week. Uh, on my bike would be my average. Sometimes I would go up to 25. Sometimes I would be around 10. And unfortunately, I crashed out uh, in almost in Colorado. So uh, and we had to we had to stop. Um, a month before that, though, I had done a 200 mile race from uh, in Oceanside, California, and I ended up winning that race. And so I think that was like the catalyst in my mind of like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And it was dubbed the, the hardest 200 mile race in, the, in America. It was 200 miles. You climbed 20,000 feet. Um, it took me 14 and a half hours. And uh, there were a couple of professional cyclists in the race and beating them and, you know, having a, a race where I was able to finish it, that really inspired me and motivated me to like, oh my gosh, I, I think I can do this. Um, and so a month later, Race Across America happened. I crashed out. So this Hoodoo 300 was sort of a redemption uh, for Race Across America. Uh, and so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I know a few people that have done RAM. Um, <clears throat> I know my, my friend Michelle did the solo. Um, she, I believe she won that solo when she did it, which is amazing. Um, yeah. She also also had an incident in Colorado. She was saying that um, she was pedaling and she was so tired at some point. There was just some like prairie grass and she'd, her, she just fell over on her bike and basically went to sleep. <laughs> and they were like, her crew was like, let's just leave her here for a little bit and yeah. see. And so she slept it off just like in this grass and then woke up and was like, okay, let me start pedaling again. Yeah. Um, okay. So what does it look like? You were saying 15 hours average training I mean are you doing like varied things are you doing you know hill repeats short days long days or is it all just kind of long I mean how do you get because I I've done some training just for like well only like 100 miles or whatever like I did a three-day 300 mile uh, ride to Santa Barbara that was a lot of climbing it was 22 33 30 22 thousand feet but we did it in three days so not not all in one shot but I just did a bunch of long slow stuff because it wasn't a race. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in, in this idea of like long, um, but not slow. <laughs> right. So right. kind of no. walk us through your training for that. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think, you know, I, I, I've been coaching as well for, I think I'm in year 15 of, of coaching. And so I really do try to use my, my training uh, to, to refine my, my coaching capabilities and, and knowledge in the sport. And one of the methods that I've really adopted is, is 
with ultras especially, and currently I'm training three athletes to do a 50 kilometer run. So, oh, awesome. uh, so I'm, 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 I'm using a lot of my, my past and my experience in my own personal strategies uh, for these ultras. And, and really my strategy and methodology is to, to still integrate a lot of speed um, and intensity, even for ultras. And so there's, I know a lot of people would just do zone two, um, 100% of the time. And I get that. And I think it, it does have its, its place, but with, with race across America, or even with this 300 mile race, I tend to focus a lot of intensity and intervals during the week. And then on the weekends, I'll focus more on in endurance. And so getting more specific when I say intervals, I mean, I'm trying to bump up my threshold. And so I'm doing VO2. If I'm on the bike, I'm doing, for instance, uh, 40 intervals at 30 seconds at 120% of my functional threshold power. So that's max. Uh, and so it's, it's intense and it's hard. Um, and then when I get to the weekends, you know, and especially if I'm training for, if my event is a hilly uh, race, uh, I'll do five to six hours on the bike, but I'll, I'll make it to where I'm, I'm doing 10,000 feet of climbing. So I, I focus on quality, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, I switch and, and do endurance. And that's the typical strategy, for, even for my 50K runners. You know, on Tuesday, they know that it's going to be intense. There'll be hill repeats. Um, heck, I had you doing hill repeats mm -hmm. as, as well. And I was doing them without knee pain. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <was> so good. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and, and, and really the, the thinking of behind it is that with doing intensity during the weeks, we're raising the threshold. And so if somebody's zone two, uh, because when you're doing a 50K race, you're kind of at zone two. But let's say, you're, I, I want, let's say your zone two is eight minute per miles, right? Um, and that's what you're going to do on race day. But if we can make it to where we focus on speed and we make your zone two like 740, all right? Because we're focusing on intensity. Then when you get to race day, your zone two, your easy is, a, is 20 seconds faster. And so that's sort of the, the, the method that, that's worked and that I employ with my athletes. Awesome. How long was your buildup for the hoodoo? I mean, it seems like you'd have to be at this for a little while. Yeah, yeah. So my buildup for hoodoo is actually, um, I build out, I designed my own plan to, to, for, for six months before the race. Okay. Um, and I had a pretty good base going into it. So I was able to six months before the race to, to start integrating like intensity and I was just going right into it. Um, but there, there was, there was a build. Yeah. So whereas uh, a lot of other people would have to spend, you know, quite a significant amount of time getting that base before they're able to incorporate some of that speed work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And, and as for some of my athletes, when they sign up for a 50 K, if they don't have that base, um, you know, really what it is, it's, it's about eight to 12 weeks uh, where we're just piling on the strain. But with, with what I focus on is uh, even in doing base and in, in building up strength and endurance, I still integrate um, VO2 hard efforts. Um, I, I come from that philosophy, that mindset that even in base, you know, we want to we raise the floor. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have plans to do uh, like a, a RAM again or try something similar? Or is, was this like a one and done thing? Or how, I mean, are you now addicted? Like how some of us, you know, go to triathlon and it's like, oh, I'm going to do this again. I mean, what's, what was sort of your feeling when you were done? My feeling when I was done is I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, Lindsay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a short distance guy and, mm -hmm. you know, I spent the last year bike racing mm -hmm. and we're talking about, you know, 25 mile bike races where, uh, and hill climbs where it's just, it's intense. It's an adrenaline rush and it's just, you're fighting and I love it. And you're done like in, in 90 minutes or two hours. And, you know, when I'm doing the hoodoo, I'm racing and I, and it's a race and I want to win, uh, you know, but, but there, speaking of that, didn't you podium? 
I did. I got second place. Um, I got wow. second place, um, awesome. <laughs> which is nice. But, you know, the thing about ultras is that, um, and this was a learning lesson, is that, you know, it's what I got from it was was not not the satisfaction really of being second place, but the satisfaction of persevering um, and being able to battle my demons during the race, which is very, very different from the short distance events that I do, uh, where it's really about tapping into the speed and it's about strategy and it's about when am I going to go hard and when am I going to attack? Uh, this was very, very different. You know, I, I went from first place to second place. I got passed at around about mile 145. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is when I was getting passed, my mind is like, oh, you know, I, you know, I got to stay with him and then I'm going to attack him. And, and like, there's none of that, you know, in ultra, you just kind of settle into your rhythm and you got what you got, you know, and, um, you know, whether it's a 300 mile race or a 50 K race, you know, you got to race within yourself. Um, and you got to race your race. And so I had to literally remind myself like, Wes, you're not racing his race. You, you don't need to stay on his wheel. Like, you just, you got to do what you got to do. And so I let him go and I just did what I could do. Um, and so it, it was challenging and hard. Um, and I did it more for, to kind of understand myself and do a personal challenge for myself. Um, but I think, you know, maybe in a couple of years, I'll, I'll, I'll go back in. Am I addicted to it? Do I want to get back into it? No, <laughs> um, but it was, it was, it was good. And I feel like I'm a better coach now uh, for people who are interested in ultras. Yeah, I learned yeah. a lot. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So can um, you take us through the beginning or race day, how you show up and the, what it's like, what the atmosphere is like? I mean, I understand the atmosphere of triathlon. I understand the atmosphere of sprint Olympic half and Ironman, but I've, I've never been to any of these ultra events. Like are, are people pumped up or is it kind of like a more low key trail racing, you know, vibe or, or what is it? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good question. And I think one of the cool things about ultras is that, that that's very different from uh, your triathlon, a uh, typical triathlon that you'll see is it, is it the vibe is very, it's a lot more chill and people are very supportive people are talking, um, you know, in, in the day before the days leading up, you know, you're, you're making friends because you kind of realize that you're about to embark on something where we're kind of, we're all going to be suffering, you know, we're all, we're, and, and we're all trying to, you know, get through this. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and so it's very different. You know, you're not really thinking about the podium. You're not thinking about how you're going to do in your age group. You're just realizing that you're about to encounter and face a lot of obstacles and um, you're going to be doing this with other people. Um, and so the vibe is a lot more relaxed and chill. Um, and you don't feel that, uh, that visceral tension when you're setting up your, your transition and mm -hmm. you're kind of eyeballing your competition and you're like, oh my gosh, you know. Um, uh, it, it, and, and so when the race starts, you know, it, it's not like everyone is gung-ho. It's, it's like, you know, you realize this is going to be yeah. – between 17 hours and for some people 30 hours. So it's like you're, it's so it's, it's, it's encouraging. The atmosphere is encouraging. Um, uh, and just, it's, it's just a little bit more chill and slower. Um, and, and I kind of, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Um, so I know that this was a race, which is different than like an event, like a, you know, century ride or whatever, but I'm wondering if, um, because of the distance were there people there who were basically just like you'd mentioned racing their own race just to finish within the the deadline because i will say that um you know my partner josh raced road bikes for a long time and i always laugh because i like the triathlon uh vibe of like because even though people are kind of sizing each other up a little bit in transition there's also a lot of people who are not doing that like myself who are mm -hmm. just like hey what's happening you know we're yeah. mm -hmm. and and you know you can come in last in a triathlon and people are going to clap you in i went with josh to a bike race and it was like dead silent they were all in their trainers by their cars like no one was talking they had headphones and they're all spinning getting warmed up and then they got in their little group you know before the start and it was just silent 
and they were just so intense. And then you take, and if you get dropped and you're coming in the, you're just a loser, like they, no one cares, right? They're just like, <laughs> you're a loser. Um, so just wondering, like, is this though a little bit of a different vibe than that because of the distance or was it more bike, traditional bike racy? No, no. I, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right uh, with the bike racing scene in, in, in America is that's kind of how it is, unfortunately. And I think that's, that's why it hasn't really grown because it's not very inviting. Um, but everything you said about bike racing, that, that really is the vibe. Um, and this was very, very different. You do have people that are out there like myself that, you know, I come in and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there to, to win the race. Like I, I, I want to, I want to go and, and, and do well. Um, I would say that I'm, I'm in the vast minority because a lot of people there are, they, they've trained. I talked to, I talked, spoke to a lot of people there that they, they really worked hard and they put in the hours, uh, but they just want to be able to, to complete it and finish it. So in a lot of ways it, it is like, you know, a marathon, you know, um, in, in running marathons, you know, very few people are there to win the race or to. Right. You know, At the but, completion. Yeah. Yeah. But to be able to say I did a marathon and, you know, that's, and it, it, that's kind of a, it, it's a big deal. Uh, I've never done a marathon. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so yeah, I think that's, that's sort of the, the type of athlete that's going to show up to, to an ultra race like that. Awesome. So what are the high points and what are the, the low points? You, you talked about facing some demons out there in the course. Can you walk us through highs and lows? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think first of all, with with um, with the highs, um, it's it's the camaraderie. Um, you know, when when you're racing in, in in the particular race that I did, you know, you're always passing people, uh, athletes, crews. So they're in these big RVs or vans, and they're cheering you on, and and you know, you're waving at them, and and you you begin to see familiar faces and the encouragement is, is really nice. Uh, the highs are also the fact that I have a crew, um, a, a couple of buddies of mine who, who are giving their time and, and helping me out with the nutrition, handing me water bottles, handing me food. Um, I, I'm in a beautiful area, so I'm going slow enough. Unlike, you know, some triathlons and events, um, it's, you're, you're just focused on your power numbers or your pace, and you don't really get to take in the scenery. And so mm. I'm in a beautiful part of Utah. So there was a couple of moments, not a lot, but a couple of moments where I was able to kind of appreciate the, the environment um, and the beautiful rocks and just scenery. Um, as far as the low points uh, in, in this particular race, and something I, I just really couldn't train for is the altitude. Mm -hmm. And um, so just to kind of give you an idea, St. George is at 3,500, uh, around about 3,000 feet elevation, which isn't too bad, but we climb up to 10,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I did fine from three to 7,000 feet. You know, I led the race. I was pacing perfectly. And then, you know, I get up to, we, we start this 30 mile climb, which was just Horrible, horrible. Um, thirty mile climb sounds horrible. No matter. Sounds awful. Oh I, I mean, not even at altitude. Starting at sea level, thirty miles of climbing sounds awful. So. Yeah, and, and it's yeah. like, it's like a sick joke that the race directors and they put it like at a, at around one hundred and thirty miles or so, and it's like, it's just like this long climb, and you're going from, uh, like, um, like five thousand to, to almost ten thousand, or yeah, ten thousand feet. And, and as I was going up and up and up, um, you know, the altitude really began to affect me. And again, like I said, there's really nothing a whole lot I can do in the Bay Area to, to prepare for that. Um, it, ideally, I would have shown up to St. George two weeks before the event and acclimatized, but, you know, I, I don't have that privilege. And so, um, so it really began to affect me and my power began to drop and like, there's nothing I can do. Um, and so... Uh, the, the low point was, was that, and it's, it's, it's having those thoughts of like, wow, my crew is right there. I can just quit. And this hurts so bad. Um, and then I got past, um, halfway, 
about halfway up the climb is when I went from first to second. And then it's really like, now it's like, oh, you know, Wes, you know, you, you just lost um, everything you've just been training for. And, you know, and, and really the low point is, is dealing with that inner chatter in my head. And, and this is where um, I had to really dig deep and really begin to the self coach in my head of saying, okay, like, it's okay. All I can do is what I can do. Um, and it's not about winning the race. Uh, but this is an opportunity for me to really grow as a human being and to persevere and understand what mental fortitude and resilience really is. And so it's, it's that self coach in my head of saying, Wes, relax. It's not about winning. Wes, relax, just get through it. Show your crew that, that you, you're tough, that you can get through this. Um, and also like, I'm their coach, like the two people that I had crew, like I'm their coach. So it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. really bad. You just quit. If, if, if I just swerve off the road and like, and just like one I'm person done. passed me, I'm done. <laughs> Screw this. Throw your water bottle yeah. off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. This sport, you know, endurance sports sucks. Um, <laughs> and so um, uh, I think that was, it was the low point, uh, Mike, but it was also, it was also the most meaningful point. My low points were also the most meaningful Um, And it's something I don't regret. And it's something that now, like when I coach my 50K, and I've got, you know, a couple of them, the races are coming up. I walk with them through that, you know, I'm like, listen, you're going to have dark moments. And that's what I call them. I call them dark moments. And, you know, it's really going to test you as a human being. And it's going to test your mental resilience. And the reason why I want you to get through it is because this is the type of mental fortitude and resilience that you're going to need in your regular life. You know, mm-hmm. when, when, you know, your, your employment says we got to let you go. Um, when you have issues in your marriage, you know, when, when anything that happens comes your way, you're going to have that inner dialogue that says, you know, you can't get through this. Like it's going to get worse. Like, you know, and so it's, how are you going to be able to control that inner chatter in your head to where you can shift perspectives and say, you know what, this is a learning experience and I'm going to get through this. I've talked a lot about that, uh, that type of, of the benefit of, of endurance sports for, for that, you know, for realizing Mm -hmm. that like um, continuing to walk through a dark moment, like if you walk through it, you will get to the other side. If you don't walk through it, then forever and ever you're thinking every time something comes up, it's like, well, maybe I can't get through it because you haven't experienced it. Um, so that's been very beneficial to me, you know, just doing yeah. triathlon, especially the longer stuff. Cause I'm with you on the short stuff. Like that's kind of my, my jam would be like a sprint, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, but you're right. I don't learn a lot about myself doing that. It's like, that's what I ran in school. I ran track was like 200, 400, you know, so it was over really fast. And um, the long stuff I, you know, that, that <clears throat> I've heard people say, you know, your brain, your brain gives up way before your body mm-hmm. actually needs to give up. And that's right. probably a, some sort of protection mechanism that we have, but, oh, yeah. um, but my brain wants to stop, I mean, pretty quickly into any kind of pain, you know, it's like, oh, no, no, okay. we don't, we, you know, why are you out here? You don't need to do an Ironman. What's that? Like, yeah. but my body actually can do it if I just can harness that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about the inner chatter a little bit. What about the external chatter as this guy is coming up and passing you? Do they say anything like good game or? a good race or like well, what's what's going on there or on your left screaming on, on your, your left, left like people yeah. do triathlon it's like uh, yeah i know that you're there so that would have been the worst if you would have said that that would have been the worst <laughs> yeah. you would have had to jump off your bike and fight him <laughs> yeah yeah no when when he came by he looked at me and all he said was yeah this is tough <laughs> and so um and it was on the, it was on that long climb. And, um, you know, it, and at that moment, you know, my body, again, with the altitude, it's just, you know, I'm feeling weak. I'm dizzy. Um, I, it, uh, at that point, I kept closing my eyes and I, honestly, Mike, I wanted to go to sleep. Um, and yeah. I, and so I, I barely had my eyes open to where I could just see in front of me. And, um, it would, all I was telling myself was like, just, just keep pedaling. Don't stop. Just keep pedaling. Um, and, and, 
and really just kind of watching him just kind of, you know, pass me and, and, and go. And, and, and so, but yeah, the externally, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what was, what was going on. Um, my body at that moment was uh, also hurting. I was so sore. You know, it's, it's like I'm on the verge of cramping. It's like, I'm all, I'm, I'm just at that point to where if I go just a little bit harder, it's like my whole body will just cramp. And, mm, yeah. and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly just monitoring like, okay, Wes, just keep it here. Like, it's okay. And again, it's that, it's that self coach of, of just saying like, you know, just keep it here. It's going to be okay. Uh, don't go harder. Don't stand up. Uh, because if I would have stand stood up on my bike, um, I would have been done. My, my whole, my quads would have just seized up. Um, so it's just, it's, it, it's, it's finding that, that point that you can tolerate and yeah, it's uncomfortable and it hurts, but it's staying there knowing that if you go a little bit harder, it's, it's you're going to be out of your zone and it's going to just, you're, you're going to sabotage your race. So, but just accepting that uncomfortability um, and just knowing that it's temporary. Uh, but man, knowing that, that when I get to the, the top of this 30 mile climb, there's a descent and it's, and it really was all downhill from there. Um, and, and knowing that, that, you know, what I kept telling myself is, man, just think about when you get back to the hotel and you get to lay down, like, don't you want to be able to lay down and know that you just accomplished this, you know, you finished it. Um, and, and that really what is what motivated me. Yeah. I like how you said that there it's, I, I think the word, the phrase sweet spot doesn't quite nail it, but it's the gist of it of like where you want to be in endurance sports, not crushing it to where you can't sustain it, but past that point where it's you know comfortable so yeah 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 and in in the the phrase that i use with with myself and my athletes is when it comes to ultras is what i encourage myself and my athletes to do is find your rhythm like mm. it's your rhythm and, and and your rhythm doesn't mean that it's comfortable like it doesn't mean that it's not going to hurt um you're going to have some low points but you find your rhythm and when i got past I'm not going to go to his rhythm. Mm -hmm. All right. I had to tell myself, no, 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 Wes, you stay at your rhythm. Um, all you can do is what you can do. Just do your best, but stay at your rhythm. And I think that's really the key with, with ultras is that, you know, you don't want to start out too fast. No, you just settle into your rhythm and just, and just stay there. Yeah. yeah that, that, um, it seems like with the lo the longer you go, the, <clears throat> the the more important it is for you to just have your plan and execute your plan as opposed to adapting um on the course to what right. other people are doing where which right. you can do when it's a sprint you can go oh i gotta pick it up because that guy's right you know passing me right. and but um it's a you're right it's a completely different animal yeah um and you can break yourself by forgetting what your plan is or not executing your plan or yeah, S switching because this guy's passing you right now, or um, yeah, I mean, it's it on sounds... those long distance races. I mean, you you think about it in nautical terms. You you turn a couple degrees, and if you're going a few hundred miles, you are miles and miles away from your goal. So it's the ability to stick to your plan seems pretty amazing. What what also fascinates me is that Lindsay and I have the advantage of being around other people usually during the race, and so we can pace and talk with people or, or pace and be in that that rhythm but still around other people mm -hmm. to keep our minds off it but you're up in the front where there's nobody else and so mm -hmm. you're even more uh at odds or or battling or or you know working with your thoughts so that's the mm -hmm. impressive what what's it like to to head in head home and, and come into the finish for this race well <laughs> the last Oh my gosh. The last 20 miles, it was just, I'm just going to be honest. It was pure hell. Um, <laughs> it was just, I, uh, you know, I downed, I think the last 20 miles I downed, uh, six Red Bulls, um, Oof. and a couple of brewed coffees. Um, and you know, by this time it's like 10 o'clock at night. Um, and, yeah. And my, and, and I'm just on the verge. My body is just, it's just on the verge. And um, so it's nighttime. I got my, my crew following me now with their headlights. So they're like, you know, 20 feet behind me. Um, and, 
and I'm just wanting it to be over. Um, and, and that's all I can think about. Uh, I don't care about my time. Now, and also, I even thought about like, what if I get past the last 20 miles? And honestly, like, I didn't care. Like at that point, like I didn't even care. I just wanted to get done with it. Um, but coming into the finish line was really gratifying. Uh, it felt really good. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's people there. Um, the guy who ended up beating me uh, uh, was there with his, he had like 10 crew members and they were just so nice. Like, so like never in a, I, I've gotten second place overall in a lot of triathlons and like, you know, to be welcomed by the person that beats you and with just so, so generous and so nice. Um, like it was just like, wow, I'm not even mad at you for beating me. <laughs> I'm, I'm so That's pretty glad powerful. You, yeah. I'm, I'm so happy that he won. Um, I really am. Um, and so, uh, so it was just, again, it's, it's the vibe of ultras that, that when you finish everyone at the finish line knows that it's not about your time. It's really not about your place, but you just accomplished something that was uh, long and grueling. And so it's like, you know, uh, they're just so happy for you. And so it was really nice. It was really nice. Sounds very fraternal with like the camaraderie of like, we conquered the elements here. We conquered 300 miles of some serious climbs and some serious elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you being honest too about it sucking at the end. Cause you know, you hear a lot of times <laughs> people are like, Oh, you know, I was just so excited and pumped and, you know, and I always mm -hmm. think God, I'm always just like dragging at the end, but it was good to hear you say, no, nah, it sucked. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I was waiting for that elation, that euphoria, that adrenaline, the last 10 miles that you're like, oh, you're almost there. And I'm like, nope, did, did not. No matter how many Red Bulls that I downed, like I was waiting for that, that caffeine to kind of jolt me. And it was like, nope, it's like, let's just get this done. That seems like if five Red Bulls aren't going to do it, I guess this <laughs> one won't either. But at that point, you got to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe the number six. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine having that many Red Bulls. I probably would, that would probably be the, the end of me, but um, yeah. 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 I can't say that talking to you has motivated me to attempt a 300 mile ride um, or anything longer than 112 really. Um, mm -hmm. But I do like, um, I do like applying just, you know, some of the principles that you've talked about in terms of of racing your own race and using the lessons um, from doing these kinds of challenges, uh, taking those out into your real life. I think that that's probably the most important takeaway for, for me, you know, um, mm -hmm. for this, um, for um, today. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I think that just the idea that you're going to have these low spots, not that there's something that should be avoided, but that when you get there, you're able to be resilient and have that positive mental chatter, like, stick to your plan. I can only do what I can do, you know, keep pedaling, just those little mantras, those little things you can say to yourself to get through those dark spots. So mm -hmm. that's, that's something I'll, I'll strengthen and, and take away. And I think all our listeners can take away from this. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of us regular age groupies that are not um, elite, you know, we're just people that, you know, so we're not going to win. We're not going to get on the podium. I, at least I know for me, sometimes I, I, and I've heard other people mention, it's like, we, we think of ourselves in a completely different class from elite athletes and that, and that in some way, like the elite athletes aren't suffering, you know what I mean? Cause they're just so fast. And they're going to go do their Ironman in nine hours. So what, I mean, that's not that like, does nine hours isn't that long. It's like a work day, <clears throat> yeah. but so it, you know, it's helpful to know, like, yeah, it's not an, if you suffer it's when, and so, um, we're all facing that when we're doing these races, not, not just people who are not particularly athletically talented like myself. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, and one of the things that, you know, uh, I think for people listening to this is one of the things that I've really taken away is that, you know, I, I, I am so thankful um, that I, I did it and I'm so glad that I did it. I, again, in it having done it, I'm like, I'm not that type of racer. This is not in my wheelhouse um, as far as like long, slow. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that I, I did it because I'm, I'm a better human being 
uh, for it. And the, the wisdom that I gained and the mental resiliency has made it worth it. And that's why, you know, so what I do this again, no, but Lindsay, I will say this. Um, when I got back and I had a couple of athletes say, you know, oh, you know, COVID, all the races are canceled, but there's a couple of races in Utah, some 50 kilometer runs. And I will say uh, that I was like, hmm, maybe I should do a 50K run. Um, and, and the reason is, is not because I want to win or, or run for time, but it's like, what's my potential with the 50K run? Like, can I do it? Can a miler who went to, who ran the mile in college, what can I do with the 50K? So it's something where I am completely pumped for my athletes that want to do an ultra. And the benefit that I think that I want your listeners to take away from it is that, you know, doing an ultra really can change you as a human being. Um, it can make you stronger, more resilient. And, and that takeaway is just, it's just worth it. It's just worth it. I yeah. hear you. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I am motivated to, or inspired to do a 50 K run someday. That's definitely on my, my, uh, I actually want to do a 50 miler. That's my ultimate yeah. goal. I think, you know, um, and I think that's probably the maximum amount of time I'd want to be running. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I think um, for the reasons that you said, you know, any kind of challenge, if you're a listener and you haven't done anything longer than maybe a three mile run or whatever, you don't have to get all the way up to 50 K or 300 mile ride to yeah. get to this um, learning. You know, it's like, I feel like I learn something at each point, every time I step up the distance or change or add a new sport or whatever, I learn yeah. a little bit more. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Do you have anything else, Mike, that you want to ask or Wes? Or I just, else you I just want to ask where can, where can listeners find you and see what you're up to, Wes? Oh, I guess uh, you can follow me on, on Strava. Um, uh, I, I have a, a group of athletes that I coach. We're called Team Enduro. So again, I've been coaching for about 15 years, uh, primarily triathletes and, and now a handful of ultra uh, runners. Um, and so uh, we're at uh, uh, teamenduro.com, team-enduro.com. Uh, to learn a little bit more about us. Um, we are taking on new athletes and all right. we, are, we are all about helping athletes, um, you know, reach their goals and really find their potential. Um, and the athletes that we coach they're you know, the majority are not on the podium. They're not trying to win races, but they're just trying to, to learn more about, you know, what is it, what, it, what does it look like to push their bodies? Uh, and that's awesome. That's awesome. So um so yeah that's how that's awesome. awesome and links in the show notes everyone check them out right now yes, definitely check them out i can say from personal experience wes is a good coach i'm gonna be hitting you up at the beginning of 2021 i've got some professional stuff i'm working on right now for my actual job so that i can afford to pay for coaching but um <laughs> <laughs> but uh january 2021 i'm planning to get back on the uh, beam for my sort of ultra distance run the trans rockies it's only 20 miles a day but it is three days in a row only that's 20 ultra. miles a day yeah. that's ultra. That's ultra. <laughs> yeah. who knows maybe i'll change to the the 120 they do have a nice. 120 offering so we'll nice. see but um yeah everybody check out wes um and team enduro and um thanks so much for taking time to talk to us about this it was um very inspirational a lot of good wisdom there mm -hmm. and thank uh you, thank you. yeah all right thank you for having me no, oh, yeah, no worries. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Wes. Take care. Bye bye. All righty. That concludes today's episode of the Age Groupies podcast with me, Lindsay Hyken, and my co host, Mike Ergo. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook. And look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, as this really helps us get more exposure while we try to grow this little venture. And of course, if you have friends you think might like the show, please be sure to share it with them. But for now, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next week.